Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today, let's talk about graphing this square root function. As you can see here, this is not the most basic square root function because there was a negative sign in front of the square root of x. And so you may say, how do we do this? Uh, we are going to use transformation. So that means we are going to start by first graphing the parent function, which is y equals square root of x. And then this one has the shape that looks like this. And then the three key points that we are going to get would be the, the origin, the zero, zero. So you plug in zero into the X and you are going to get zero for the Y, right? And then we plug in the one and then we're playing the one square root of one is one. And then the other one is that uh, we plug in the four. You can plug in a two as well, but plugging a four will allow you to just take the square root of four, which will just give you a nicer number. So you just get two, so four, two. And so if we plot those three points on there, so we are gonna get this point, zero, zero, and then one, one, and then four, two, so four is right here, and then two is in the, the Y. So we are going to get a dash curve. And so this one is actually our first one, okay? Now, how do we graph the one with the negative? Basically, what this means is that when we figure out the y value, we are going to apply a negative sign in front of each of those y values right here. So basically, we have y equals negative square root of x, and what happens is that we have the same x value, let's say we plug in the same x value, and then the y value will be opposite of whatever that we are getting here. So this one becomes what? It's still zero if you put a negative sign in front of it. And then what about the next point? X value is the same. And when we plug that in, we are going to get the opposite of this Y value here. So the, we get negative one, okay? And then the next one is going to be using the same idea, we get negative two. And so as you can see that the S, the X values are not changed, the Y values are actually opposite. And so what will really happen is that we are going to have a reflection about the x-axis. And so now the shape of the graph will look like this. And then so you may say, how does that work? Well, the points, zero, zero will still be the same point. And then what happened is that we are going to change the y value for this point to the opposite. So if it's having a y value of one, we are going to get negative one and the x value stays the same. And then same idea for the third point. What happened is that the two, now we get what, negative two. So it has positive two here, but we go in the opposite direction of the x-axis and then we have the negative two. And so now we have our final curve. And then, so this is our final graph. This is the one that we want. So I'm just gonna make a solid curve right here. Okay, so basically that's it for this problem, but we still want to find the domain, the range, right? So let's find the domain, the range. Regarding the domain, as you can see that the negative sign doesn't really affect how we are plugging in the X, right? So we still want all the non-negative X values. So we are starting from zero, including zero, and then we go all the way to infinity. As you can actually see from here, we actually may not even need the graph to figure out the domain because you can see that we can only plug in uh, positive or zero in here. Because if we plug in the negative number, we are going to get an uh, imaginary number. So uh, for a real value function that we are dealing with, then we are just going to plug in a non-negative number. Now, what about the range? The range is going to be what? The range, as you can see that the range actually is affected by this negative sign because um, for the original parent function, we are going to go from zero to infinity because the uh, the curve will actually just keep going up and up and up right but this one is different as you can see that it will just keep going down and down so there is no lower bound for this there is no restriction as you can actually go in the negative direction and then so we start from negative infinity to what is the highest point the highest point is actually this point here which has a y value of zero so we are going to get zero here and then, oh, actually we need to include the zero. So we gotta use brackets right here. Okay, so that's it for this problem. Okay, let's look at another one here. This function has the negative sign inside the square root 
instead of the on the outside. And so what really happens is that we are going to use a horizontal reflection for this function. And so now how does that work? If we are graphing from the parent function, we already have the graph just to save the time. And then we have the three key points already. So one of them is a zero, zero. The other one is a one, one. And then the, um, the third key point is the four, two. Okay. And what really happens is that we are going to start thinking about how to change our x value so that we can do the reflection. So we have the square root of negative x, the negative sign inside the square root. I'm not going to show the shape yet. I'm going to just look at the key points first and see what happens. Okay, so uh, for the first key point, the 0, 0, it actually will still be the same. Why is it the same? Because if we plug in 0 here, negative 0, we get 0. Square root of 0 is still 0. So that point is actually the same thing. So we are going to still just get the 0, 0 here. And then now the next point is that if we just use, still use the same x value right here, there is a problem because we have negative 1 inside the square root. That will be i. And for the graphing, we only want uh, this function to be a real value function. So we don't want the imaginary here. So what happens is that we cannot really plug in the 1 anymore. Instead, we can plug in the opposite opposite of the one. Why? Because we already have a negative sign here. If we plug in negative one here, the two negative signs will cancel because you are just going to get something that looks like this. Okay, the negative signs will get canceled. And then we are still just going to get the one. And so in this case, we are still going to get the same y value. So what happens is that we have negative one here, and then the y value doesn't change. And then using the same idea, we are going to use the opposite of the original uh, x value for the parent function. And then now you can see that they're opposite of each other. And then what about the y value? The y value doesn't change because you play in negative four, the negative signs will get canceled. And then we are still taking the square root of four, which will give us a two. So those are the key points that we have here. And if you plot them, and then you can see that negative one, one will give us this point here. So this point, and then negative four, two is the negative four, and then two. See that the y values don't change, but the x values are, uh, they become the opposite. And so we are really just reflecting this parent function about the y axis, and then we get the same shape, but reflected to the other side. So it's like a mirror here. Okay, so we the shape of the graph will look like this. And then now we can actually just 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 connect the dots here and then make a solid curve. And then this is the one that we want. So this is the the curve two. Okay, and so that's it for the graphing part. And then now we just need to figure out the domain, the range. Okay, so we getting the domain because we already have the graph. So it will be easier to find it. As you can see that it will cover the which part of the x axis, the graph. It will cover from negative infinity all the way until you get to here. There was nothing on this side, right? Remember that we are looking at the solid curve here. We don't look at the parent function anymore. So we are going to have negative infinity. And then we get up to this point right here, which is having an x value of zero. So we get zero. And this point is a solid dot. So we are going to use the bracket. The point is included, right? So we get that. And then what about the range? Now the range is also simple by just looking at the graph. The lowest point, as you can see that it's having a y value of zero. So we are starting from zero here to where? To just keep going up and then it, you can see that it will cover uh, the whole positive y-axis and actually we'll just keep on going forever so we are going to get infinity there is no bound for the uh, for the y in this case so it will be infinity and so that is the domain the range okay so that's it for this two problems i will do a more complicated example next time thank you for watching